Shout out to the Danny Houston podcast, man. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so cliche. Cliche just came in here. What's going on, cliche? <laughs> okay, so so tell me this because this is it's so cool talking to you and like all the things you're telling me about. Like you've lived through the Malcolm X, the Martin Luther King, the JFK. You've lived through all these things, and usually, you know, y'all's generation kind of shunned hip hop a little bit. Were you? To the place you at now from the jump or did you have to kind of come around to no no i i loved hip-hop i had an aunt brother that loved the rapper's delight so ain't no way i could just i could just say i didn't like it i i, I liked it because you know they sample good times so i'm coming out of already the, familiar the, yeah these are, and so you know dun, 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 do you know the hip, the hop, the, the hip, hip, the, the hip, hip, the hip, 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 hop? You don't. So it's not like I couldn't love it. And then, of course, I'm influenced. I'm Curtis Blow, and I and I, I tell you a secret, brother. I used to like DJ. What? I, but it, it makes sense, though. It makes sense because we. You, I could. You, you're really, really passionate about this music. I can tell you're not just giving me this because I'm a music guy. Like I know this is in you. So. No, I'm not surprised that you were a DJ. It's a trip, so, but yeah. So, so all of this, you know, so of course, it, and I used to do Christmas parties. and uh, Wait, what, to, you, what you playing when you DJing? When I, when I play, I play, I play, usually somebody come up to me about about 11.30 after about three, four drinks. They say, me, you got some loofah? Play some loofah for me. <laughs> Still in love wait, with wait, me. Wait, 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 wait. This is in the 80s you DJing? Sure. Early, so were, early 80s. But you came to the nation... I came to the nation. Okay, so you want my story? I'll give you my story. That's why I was getting ready to go to like what right. brought you to the actual, you know. So, so let me finish the point about the influence of music, of rap. So of course I love Curtis Blow, you know. And Christmas is one thing I know. So every year about this time, I I celebrate it's it with a rhyme, rhyme yeah. you know. <laughs> so that kind of so you got that. And uh, but my background is is like this, beloved. Growing up in New York, right. And I lived in what is called Washington Heights. Washington Heights was the headquarters of George Washington during the Battle of Harlem, during the Revolutionary War. It is, and it's adjacent to what is called Sugar Hill, where all the high society black people lived, right? But all of my family lived in Harlem, right? And, the, and Washington Heights looks over the polo grounds where the Rucker tournament is played. But the polo grounds was actually, when, when my family moved there, the Polo Grounds was actually the place where the New York Mets and the New York Giants played. So I could go up on my roof and look and down the into game. the stadium, but they were like ants, so you really <laughs> couldn't tell, man. But everything that I learned, I learned to swim at the Harlem Y on 135th Street. My grandmother lived on 117th Street and 7th Avenue, which is now called Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. Around the corner from there on 116th Street and Lenox Avenue, which is now Malcolm X Boulevard, is Moss or Temple Number Seven? So my grandmother, I was born on her birthday, and I, I, I my grandmother's next to, to God and the minister and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and and uh, uh, my grandmother and my own mother. My grandmother is my heart. Hmm. So I would go visit her, and sometimes we'd go shopping. So there was no Walmart, Super Walmart, Super Target, and all of that. We would go from store to store to store up and down 116th It's street. like little bodegas yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Bodegas and, and, and whatnot to get it. Nobody ever robbed them. Nobody ever bothered them because those brothers was on the corner with that newspaper, that Muhammad Speaks newspaper, mm. selling that newspaper. And them stern brothers, I was looking at them, I was a little scared of them now. They were stern face, brother, you know, selling that paper. And then, you know, there was a delicacy that we ate bean pies and carrot cakes. And then you go to the steak and take and you'd have the steak sandwiches or you'd have the fish sandwiches and whatnot. So the, the influence was there. And then there were basically two stations you picked from on AM if you wanted to hear music. It was WWRL 1600 AM and it was WABC. WABC had Bruce Morrow and I think Murray Decay and others cat like that. But you, you had on uh, WWRL... Uh, you had the, the Frankie Crocker and those kind of uh, DJs that would come on there. And Minister Farrakhan would come on there. You would hear Reverend Ike on that station on Sunday, mm. you know. So 
but the influence of the of the Muslims was always there. And then, of course, uh, where I would go play basketball on 173rd Street going uptown, I, you'd pass by the Audubon Ballroom where Malcolm X was assassinated. And when I broke my, uh, my wrist uh, at, at day camp, matter of fact, at, at the YMCA, where I got my wrist set is the same hospital, Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, where Malcolm X was taken after he was shot. And where I got my first pair of braces was there. So all of that is a, is a kind of like it soaks into your DNA. And for me, but th but these are just influences. You're not going to the mosque and y'all yeah. y'all not doing this is just what's around. This is just you see that. Yeah. So when you love somebody like I love my grandmother. And then at a certain point in time when the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad departed 1975 and there was a change of leadership in the nation, they moved Minister Farrakhan out of there. They kind of disbanded and changed the, 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 the fruit of Islam, the brothers. They changed that. I can mark that time my grandmother got beat and robbed. And we had to move her out of New York and move her down to New Jersey, where eventually my mother even took me because I was starting to get in trouble. So I finished school in a place called Whitesboro, New Jersey. It's named after George White, which was the last post-reconstruction congressman out of Wilmington, North Carolina, where my my ancestral roots are from there. And that's a whole nother story. I get people here laughing about Wilmington, North Carolina, if I tell you about the Wilmington Massacre of 1898, where my <laughs> great-grandparents were literally terrorized. You think about you think about Rosewood, mm -hmm. you think about Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. There was a coup d'etat that took place in Wilmington, North Carolina in November of 1898, where they overthrew the municipal government. And so I can trace through Ancestry.com my family to that point, and then they're scattered to the four winds after that. I can't, I can't, I'm having a hard time finding them. So I Wait, 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 but you said you were getting, because I don't want to, you said you started getting in trouble in high school, though. Yeah, in my ninth grade of high school, yeah. So, okay, what kind of trouble are we talking about? Like, what you... Drugs. My, selling drugs, or, or on a using side? Drugs, I, you know, drugs, partying, drinking, Boone Farm apple wine, smoking weed. In ninth grade? In ninth grade, snorting heroin. No shit. Yeah. You just okay. You just ninth okay, grade. You just threw the whole interview. Oh, yeah, whole it, direction. It, it and and really, what I, I realized was, I came home. You know, you remember the old Richard Pryor joke where he said, "What's the clock say?" What's the clock? You don't remember that? Okay, okay. a little bit before your time. But Richard Pryor had this joke where he talked about, he tell you what time to be in. What's the clock say? My mama told me to be in at eleven o'clock. Hmm. I came in at midnight. I walked through the door. She was there with the belt. She started wailing on my backside, brother, and I didn't move. I just looked at her. I was about 13. And I, she said, what the, what's wrong with you? And I asked her, where's my father? See, I grew up in a single-parent household, me, too. me and my brother and my sisters. Yeah. But my two best friends, though their mothers and fathers were divorced, they would see them at Father's Day. They would come to baseball games and different things yeah, like you that. So you, you understand but the difference. But me, no. I seen, you know, I had godfathers, you know. <laughs> My mother was a lover. God bless her soul. <laughs> but I had godfathers. <sighs> and I, one day I just said, where's my father? And it took me to literally, I'm a grown man, to realize the look that was on her face. It was terror. I come to learn later that my mother was a victim of domestic violence and wanted nothing to do with my father. So they divorced when I was an infant. But that anger was in me. So up until that point, you never really opened that up, that conversation up about her? No, up to that point. I, I kind of wondered, because she gave me actually her first husband's last name. I had four names. I wonder what the hell I got four names. I said, my brother and my sister, they ain't, they ain't got no four names. <laughs> I got four names. Why well, I got four names? And I finally realized she put that on there so I wouldn't think I was different than them, except for I did have uh, two middle names. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, beloved, you know, at that point, so at that point, my mother realized I need to get him out of this environment. So she sent me down to Whitesboro, New Jersey, which is the tip, Cape May County, New Jersey. Brother, there's no place in East Texas or, e or Western Louisiana, brother, that's, more, that's as country as that place hmm. is, brother. That's what they call the Garden State for real. But growing up there, I finished high school there. Then I went, I went away to college in Virginia. 
did came you did back. you did you change your ways in between that like with the streets and the well, drugs and well, all that no, or, I, or you just I, making it no i just it wasn't it, i didn't have the access to to the things i had in new york new york you could find it anywhere you know anywhere you want to there you had to kind of work at it because it was sort of country and whatnot and south jersey is on the influence of philadelphia north jersey is on the influence of new york that new york media market so that being said you know, I graduated high school, and I remember taking my college papers to my school counselor. I said, Mr. Laney, you need to fill out these college papers. She said, oh, Bob, my name was Robert. Mm. Oh, Bob, you're not really college material. Go down to room A1 and see the Marine recruiter. What? It was still Vietnam was still going on at the time. I said, well, you know, Ms. Laney, it's not a matter of whether I'm going to college or not. It's only a matter of where I'm going to college. I said, you... You want to fill out these papers. You don't want my mama to come up here. Hmm. She filled out those papers. The day I graduated high school, I got my acceptance letter from Hampton Institute at that time, Hampton University. And I finished there in four years. You know, I wasn't no valedictorian for sure. But you made it through. But I made you it supposed through. to make it through, yeah. I made it through. So a lot of times what happens, beloved, is, is that our children, they see genius in them. Because there's all kind of leaders in school. There are those who are the sports leaders. There's the one who's Mr. and Miss Popularity. There's the ones who are really the scholars. There's the ones who's the gang members. You know, they in school, they just in school because, hell, oh, man, that's the place I can get me some lunch and, and you know, and I can hang out and I'm not going to jail because my, my, my probation officer said I need to go to school, you know. So you got different kind of leaders in the, in the school. So, so I was one of them that was kind of popular. I played football. I wasn't great. I wasn't going to go there no scholarship. But I was kind of popular, but she never guided me in the time that I was there from 10th grade to 12th grade to say, you know, Bob, you need to take algebra two. You need to take chemistry. You need to take physics. You need to take all of these other classes. So what I did on my own was I took a lot of history inventory and English inventory. And that basically is why I went and got a liberal arts degree. Danny Houston. Danny Houston. Danny Houston. Danny Houston.